What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for August 12th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Monday edition of the podcast. And honestly, let's get right into it because I am pissed. Absolutely pissed off. Um, this freaking team, like, I, I think I'm going to go in on them the way nobody else has so far. Like, people have started and then pulled back because, oh, they're a bunch of nice guys. No. Like, absolutely embarrassing, disgusting, despicable, whatever you want to say. Uh, I mean, I get that it's baseball. You're going to go through slumps. But, like, I, I really don't think this team is that good right now. And, I mean, my wife, who really just doesn't even follow the game as much as I do, was like, have they ever played baseball? And, and no, it doesn't look like they've ever played baseball. I've seen Little League teams play better than this. 12-5 to and, and sure, oh, well, it was a getaway game. They were like, I don't care. You're supposed to be a World Series contender. Play like it. Every game matters. You guys say all the time, like, well, you can't do... Or they say it all the time. You can't lose the game or a division here, but you certainly can win it. And guess what? Like, it's been absolutely ridiculous the fact that they have been playing this bad for so long. Like, I almost feel like the best thing that happened was the fact that they were on the West Coast. So I didn't have to watch all of these games and and go through all of this. It's just... I've never seen something that was so well go so wrong. And then everybody's like, well, it could be the uh, it's the pitching. It's just, no, it's the hitters. Because I feel as though the pitchers are, every now and then, you're going to have a bad start by a pitcher. But the offense is not there to to pick up the slack. And I feel like the pitchers are pressing. And you give up four runs like Nola did the other day. You give up two, three runs like Sanchez did yesterday. You should feel confident about that, even if you're not on your game, even if you're having trouble with your your location. You give up four runs, you got this offense, you should be okay, and they're not. And the best team in baseball, I call bullshit on that. Like, I, they're not playing like it. I'm sure, they might have the record to show it, but it's absolutely ridiculous, and I don't know if the team needs to have this conversation. Like I've heard people say, oh, well, that's just not the makeup of this team. They actually like each other. And re- F that. Like if you, if one of my coworkers is not doing what they need to do, I'm going to say something. And I would expect the same in return. They need to get called out for their poor play. Like it's embarrassing. And I feel I'm almost more mad about this team right now than I was the Eagles when they were going through their collapse. It's just, I, I don't know, there's like no sense of urgency. It's just like, oh, well, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. Well, guess what? It's been almost two and a half months now. You haven't gotten through it. Luckily, the Braves suck, the Mets suck, and you're not losing ground in the division. But guess what? So what? You win the division. Do you get a medal for that? No. You're going to get your ass kicked in the first round of the playoffs if you continue to play like this. Now would be a good time to turn it around. I, I mean, are they the, the the team that was winning 70% of those games early in the season? Probably not. I, I hope they're not the team that has been playing like this, but there's a larger sample size of them playing shitty like this than there is of them winning 70% of their games. And thank God the Braves and the Mets suck so bad or else there's a, we wouldn't be leading the division if they were playing halfway decent. So I, I guess the, the silver lining in it is the fact that they have 22 straight games coming up against sub-500 teams. So maybe this will be a good time to get it right. But nothing is uh, inspiring me to think, oh, this team is a World Series team. I'm not seeing it. They need to get their heads out of their asses and play consistently. I'm not saying they got to go back to winning 70% of their game, but there's been no effort the past two games. Like, no effort whatsoever. Like, you're getting blown out. And yes, the, the Diamondbacks are playing high, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to hear it. I don't care about the Diamondbacks. Put up, like, sure, okay, lose a game 12 to 11. Show some fight. There was zero fight in that game. Nobody's knocking runners in. 
it's we have guys that uh, I don't know. You, maybe you bring Scott Kingery up and, and light a fire under Stott's ass. Yes, he's great in the field, but his bat has completely disappeared. Where have you been, dude? Where are you, Bryson Stott? Like, does anybody know where Bryson Stott is? Because he's certainly not in the lineup for the Phillies. It's like a black hole when the bottom three guys come up, no matter who they put there. Like, it's almost like maybe they should put Bryce, uh, Bohm, and Turner down 7, 8, 9 and get some something going. It's absolutely ridiculous. And this team, as constructed right now, is not going to make it far in the playoffs if they even make it past the first round. It's just, it's utterly embarrassing, and nobody's talking about it because they're fun. There was talks a couple months ago about, this is the most lovable Phillies team. No, it's not. It never was. Maybe if they win, we can have that conversation. No team was more lovable than the 93 Phillies. Maybe a close second, that 08 team. This team isn't on that level. As far as likability and this, oh, but they're nice guys. I don't care if they're nice guys. I need some dogs in there. I need some guys. Like, they got along great in 93. Darren Dalton was not afraid to call out guys. And it's been documented by most people. Bryce, I need you to start calling out guys. It's one thing to say, oh, the superstars need to play, including me. No. And and I, I don't need to hear it. I don't need you to go out and say, I called the guys out. Just do it. Because what you guys are doing right now is not working. It's beyond frustrating at this point. So get your heads out of your asses. Whatever you got to do now that you're home after the 10-game road trip. Eat a home-cooked meal. Sleep in your bed. Come to the park tomorrow. I I, I need like a 10-game winning streak here. And everybody playing well. Uh, Well, I guess we're probably going to drop the game tomorrow because Tawan Walker's back. That's really awesome. (sighs) <sighs> Philly's off today. 22 straight versus sub-500 teams. But I am not happy. And again, thank God the Braves and the Mets are so bad. They're they're masking the fact that... And I, maybe it's not a good thing. Maybe the fact that the Braves and the Mets are so bad, it's masking the fact that the Phillies suck right now. Absolutely suck. Like, and, and, and I don't could say, oh, well, it's baseball. I don't care. They've played more bad baseball this year than they've played good baseball. It's just that their good baseball was really, really good. And they're they're resting on that right now. I don't know. It's just, I, I don't know what the issue is. I, they need to figure it out and figure it out fast. All right, some quick housekeeping things. I could go on for many, many more minutes with this. Be sure to follow me on social media. TikTok and Twitter, Jimbo underscore Mont on Instagram at Philly Jimbo. Like the YouTube channel, Jimbo underscore Mont. Spread the word. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever you got to do. The Phillies or the Eagles preview will start today. 20 questions in 20 days as we look to get toward the start of the 2024 season. And and again, I, I mean, they got a lot of things they need to work out too, but we'll, we'll deal with that later. Yesterday, the question of the day, I asked you, will a Phillies pitcher ever hit two home runs in a game? Surprisingly closer than what I thought. 57% of you said no, but big, large percentage saying that it's possible. So I would love to see it. And maybe there's going to be, that's going to be the next wave of players coming up is guys who can pitch and hit. Um, Certainly we could use some of both right now, but I digress. All right, be sure to check out my boys at Clashing Conferences podcast. Doing good shit, good stuff with baseball. Getting re- sorry, I'm just that worked up and angry about this Phillies team. Worked up all night. It's just ridiculous. New episodes drop on Friday, and then go to phillygoat.com. Do your back to school shopping for your kids. They got you covered. What whatever the sport is. Sorry, I can't even think. That's how be- messed up this two Phillies teams got me, but. Philly Goat, everything you need for back-to-school shopping. Be sure to use the promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. That's phillygoat.com, promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off your order. I was very pleased to see yesterday in Rally House. They had some Philly Goat stuff too, but your best bet is to buy it from the website and then use that promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off. All right, the Olympics are officially over, but shout-out to Philly's Kalia Copper, 
who was the clutch down the stretch star for the United States women yesterday as they won the gold medal in dramatic fashion. But Phillies, Kalia Copper, who we spotlighted on here uh, way back at the beginning of the Olympics, shout out to her for winning the gold medal and being the stud down the stretch and really stepping up and leading the team to the gold medal. All right, today we're going to go back to 2009. And on this day back in 2009, Phillies beat the Cubs 12-5 to at Wrigley Field. Raul Banez and Jimmy Rollins both hit three-run homers. Shane Victorino added a homer and a triple. He also had a beer port on his head as he was catching a fly ball out in center field in the fifth inning. Uh, if you remember, I've completely forgot about this. I remember it was great, like perfectly on his head while he was catching. It was dangerous because it, it, he could have closed his eyes and got hit in the face. Luckily, he made the catch. He did file a police complaint the next day. The fan was charged with battery and illegal contact, illegal conduct in a sport, uh, sporting facility. And uh, I guess the Cubs and everybody apologized to him. But Philly fans, though, w- were the issue, right? Yeah. Uh, I re- way to go. Way, way th- I, I shouldn't have picked this story on a day where I was going to rant on the Phillies because now here we go. It's always Phillies fans, though. Don't see Philly fans pouring beer on players' heads. Popcorn, yeah. Popcorn when they're going to the... Uh, the locker room, that's kind of funny. You shouldn't do it. But when when West, Russell Westbrook got popcorn dumped on his head, I'm not going to lie. It was kind of funny. Shouldn't do it. I don't condone it. That's funny. A beer while you're catching a foul ball or a fly ball, that's dangerous. But Philly fans, right? Hey, everybody talks about Philly fans. It's ridiculous. On that day, though, Pedro Martinez was on the mound for the Phillies, making his first start for the Phillies. A solid day. Went five innings, three earned runs, five Ks. Uh, And he was huge down the stretch for them leading into the World Series. Um, But on this day in 2009, Phils beat the Cubs 12-5 at Wrigley. Rollins and Abanez each hit three-run homers. Shane Victorino got a beer poured on his head. And uh, But Philly fans are bad. But Pedro also made his debut this day. So a lot going on in that game for the Phillies back in 2009. And I would be remiss if I did not mention this. On this day in 2013, Charlie Manuel won his 1,000th game as a Major League Baseball manager, becoming the 58th manager to do so. He was rewarded six days later with being fired by the Phillies to uh, shake things up, I guess. Uh, He is a Wall of Famer for the Phillies, uh, one of two managers to lead the Phillies to a World Series title. And the Phillies' all-time leading wins, manager leader, four wins with 780. But on this day in 2013, Charlie Manuel got his 1,000th career win as a manager. All right, so let's start off our 20 questions in 20 days. This will serve our as our Eagles preview. I, I like this kind of format and style better than a longer form uh, Eagles preview. But first question, and I think we got to kind of put the bow on last year and really start off with this we kind of touched on this a little bit last week when we were talking about the Sirianni Hurts thing but can we chalk up what happened last year to just being the Super Bowl hangover Uh, it's well documented the teams that lose the Super Bowl always struggle the year after Uh, the only per or only team to ever go back and win it was Tom Brady of the Patriots and he's just a different guy so my question today that we're going to look at is, can we chalk that up to the Super Bowl hangover? Uh, and my gut feeling is yes. All of the stories we've heard so far coming out of camp um, seem to indicate that. Like we had the whole ordeal with Jalen and Nick's relationship. They seem to be in a better spot. I've said it a thousand times, and let me say it a thousand and one. I don't need them to be BFFs. I don't need them going out to dinner. I don't need them going bowling together or golfing or whatever. I just need them to have a a working relationship when they're on the field. And by all stretch of the imagination, it seems that that's what they have. But it was more than just the relationship between Jalen and Nick. And we talked extensively about this last year while it was happening. Uh, it just snowballed out of control. And once that snowball started going, the players have since talked about that. They couldn't figure it out. They were trying too hard, and it just came unmanageable and too too much to deal with. And 
I think they've addressed those issues. They have smart people in place as offensive and defensive coordinator, uh, veteran guys who, who know their thing. They have too many stars and too many leaders as players to allow this to happen again. I, I would be shocked if we get to a point where we were last season with this team the way it's made up. I, I can't see it happening. I, I don't see anybody allowing that to happen, especially now that the story and everything is out there. Everybody kind of knows what happened, that they just couldn't get on the same page. Things sp- spiraled out of control. And I think because it might be a blessing in disguise that those stories came out and people know what was going on because I, I think they're too good too smart, too much is at stake to allow it to snowball like that again. And the fact that everybody has clearly defined roles. I think that was one of my big takeaways from the article that came out last week was that Brian Johnson was the offensive coordinator, but Nick Sirianni sort of had veto power over what was happening. And I think you kind of eliminate that now it, it, by all means, it looks like Kellen Moore's offense from what I've been seeing at camp, what I saw in that first preseason game. It's Kellen Moore, and Nick is allowed now to be in, uh, spread himself to the other camps. Because I also think the issue with the defense was that, um, I can't think, of, it was Matt Patricia who took over. I can't think of the guy's name. Sean Desai. I think Desai was overwhelmed, overmatched, not ready for the position, and he didn't have a head coach or a veteran guy there. And and say what you want. Oh, Patricia, I mean, that was Bill Belichick. What has Patricia done since he left New England? A whole lot of nothing. So you didn't really have that guy that knew really how to, to get them out of it. I don't see any of that. I'm chalking last year's situation up to the Super Bowl hangover. But it's going to be a question all year, and and it's not something that they're going to be able to escape from, especially, God forbid, they lose two in a row. Those questions are going to come up, or if they start looking a little out of sync or out of sorts, it's going to come up. But I think it's a fair bet to say that last year's issues were were chalked up to the Super Bowl hangover, and the fact that they were able to get out to a 10-1 start despite all of the the inner turmoil and issues they have, to me, is a testament to the talent level that's in that building. And I I would be willing to say, by all accounts, on both sides of the ball, they're probably better this year than they were last year. So you get the right pieces in place and get the coaching and everything like that. Should be smooth, smoother sailing. I'm not going to say nothing ever is going to be smooth, as we saw with the Phillies. But... Should be pretty smooth sailing for the Eagles, and I'm willing to chalk it up to the Super Bowl hangover. Question of the day, though, do you chalk up last year to the Super Bowl hangover, or is there deeper-rooted issues with the Eagles? 267-495-8531. That'll get you into the Back to the Future voice and text line. Let me know your thoughts on that. Is it the Super Bowl, or was last year a result of the Super Bowl hangover, or is there some deeper-rooted things going on in the building? I'm, I'm chalking it up to the Super Bowl hangover. Uh, I, I think this team, they're, they're not going to allow that to happen again. I think it was a one-off thing. And the fact that they were 10-1, and one, to me, is a testament to just how good this team is. And they're going to be better this year. So the sky is the limit. Uh, but that is our first question is uh, of the 20 questions in 20 days for the Eagles as we get ready toward the season. Is it the Super Bowl hangover or is it something more deeper rooted? Uh, we'll get more into the specifics of the offense and everything as we go through the next 20 days. But let me know your thoughts. Is it the Super Bowl hangover or something more deep? Root it. 267-495-8531. That's a Back to the Future voice and text line. Give me a call. Vent about the Phillies. Answer the question of the day. Whatever you need to do. But as we go through the next 20 days, we will have a different question each day. But today's question is... Can we chalk up last year to being the Super Bowl hangover? Be sure to get your vote in wherever you can. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and spread the word. On this day in 2009, Phils beat the Cubs out in Wrigley. Raul Banez, Jimmy Rollins, Shane Victorino all homered. Shane got a beer dumped on his head while catching a fly ball. And Pedro made his Phillies debut going five innings. 
allowing three earned runs and five strikeouts. Also on this day in 2013, Charlie Manuel got his 1,000th win as Phillies Manuel or Phillies Manuel, Phillies manager. Phillies off today. Thank God. Thank God the Phillies are off today. I I. Been looking forward the whole time they were out west, looking forward to watching the games. I hate West Coast games, but thank God I don't have to subject myself to that dreck today because I'm already in a bad mood. My back hurts. Woke up yesterday from doing lifting the other day. My back is killing me, but it hurts today. And then I don't have, at least I don't have to deal with the dreck that is the Phillies. Ugh. <sighs> Okay, I'll be better tomorrow, I promise. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for August 12th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Monday. Be sure to answer the question of the day. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.